Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. Oh, how's it going, Horror Search 30 fans? I'm your host, Sir Sturdy. I have my guest, Zombie Barbie, Zombie Barbie of the Sinister Parlor Podcast. <laughs> Zombie Barbie. There's a B in there. So how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> you figure after all this time you can say my name. <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> Zombie Boo, whatever the hell her name is. <laughs> ZB. For sure. There you go. <laughs> and really quick, that... I just noticed the uh, coughing thing you have in the background. I don't know this? I with my hands, like people can't see. It. Yeah, that looks so much Lights further up. away. <laughs> no, no, it's right oh. there. <laughs> like it looks like it's like it, in the like way back further. I didn't realize it was that freaking close to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like right next to me. <laughs> that, that's cool. I got that from. Thanks. It says the witching hour is upon us. Is there something, I see that it lights up, is there something, like, does it hold things, like jewelry or something, or is it just, like, decoration, decor? Mm -mm, it's just decoration. Whoa, I just pulled my whole computer down. See? And then it just lights oh. up. That's awesome. Thanks, I got it from the Halloween store, like, five or six years ago. Nice, nice. Anyway, people, uh -huh. I haven't found out, or figured out from the background, if you're doing the original Wishmaster, which was a first time full watch for me this time. And that's because every single time that I would watch, my, my wife and I would lay down and watch it, I would fall asleep. Not because the movie was boring, just because that's what I do when I'm laying in bed watching the movies. I eventually just pass out. And I wasn't in bed when I watched this. I don't, think. I don't remember where I was when I watched this. I know I was at home. I don't remember where I was upstairs. <laughs> All your days were like running together. <laughs> But no, I really, I did, I enjoyed the movie though. Like it was better than I thought it would be, and I, th mm -hmm. you know what it is too. It came out what ninety seven. Yeah, I believe it came out in ninety seven. And I know was it was that around the time when horror wasn't doing so hot with certain horror movies, like late nineties, early two thousands, and then Scream came out, I guess. But uh, I enjoyed this. Movie. I don't know. I know. It was kind of around the time when Wes Craven was, like, super popular. Oh, that's true. This is a Wes Craven movie. I'm not sure how mm -hmm. popular it wasn't popular. I'm not 100% sure. Was... But if it wasn't, it definitely don't, I don't know if this one was that popular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if, like, this one was, like, super popular of his, but I know that that was kind of during the time when he was just knocking them out like crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, he did do Nightmare on Elm Street, so that's kind of it's rough. It's it's tough to follow. I think yeah. maybe that maybe that's what hurt this movie as far as I'll say popularity because it's like you got Nightmare on Elm Street, and then people see this and they're expecting Freddy or not Freddy, but something like that's up on par with Freddy, and it's just different. Which it's yeah, similar. it's actually similar in the same. 
in the sense of, you know, Freddy, Dream World, you go in there, he gets stronger, he attacks you, the more you know, you know, the more people know about him, and he can go into their dreams, the more he kills with this guy, the more wishes you make, the stronger he gets, which I thought was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And that little red yeah. ruby He's thing. He's a, a djinn. Yeah, djinn. Mm-hmm. I, I just thought it was cool. I thought it was a cool movie. And the way it ended, I don't want to jump to that right now, but the way it ended was just like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I see what you guys did here. I like I like it, though. I like it. Mm-hmm. But what were your thoughts on this? Yep. And Freddie was in it. Robert Anglin was in it. He was. Him, real quick before you mm-hmm. go, Jason, which is Kane Hodder, Candyman. Mm-hmm. Yep. His real name. Damn it, Aaron. Tony Todd. Thank you. Tony Todd, which was which was, I thought was awesome. And I thought the cool thing about that was Wishmaster killed all three of them at, at certain points in the movie. So you can say he beat Jason, Freddy, and um, Candyman. Beat them, yeah. but they weren't, they weren't their selves. They weren't, you know, Freddy, Jason, which would be a fun movie to watch now that I think about it. Wishmaster versus any of those guys are all in one movie fighting. That'd be super cool. You know who else was in it? Who? Ted Raimi. Oh, I've seen his name. I don't Ted know. Ted Raimi. I don't know him by face, but I did see, like, in the credits, I did see his oh. name. Mm-hmm. He was Robert England's assistant. When they were bringing the, he's the one that got squished by the, uh, the oh, crate. in the beginning when he's yelling and swearing, like, yep. It's fucking exp- I don't know what he said. Pretty much, this is fucking expensive. Do your shit right, and then the crate falls and crushes him. Yep. And nobody really seems worried. Nobody seems too worried about him getting crushed. Like the guys digging through the crate, sort of like, <laughs> grabbing pieces. The one dude stole the ruby. They're like, oh damn. <laughs> that was like. The- that sucks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like that was like all you heard of that guy after you know after that little scene happened, which I guess you don't really have to, he's not really an important character. So you really didn't have to make it drag, which was mm-hmm. good. But uh, yeah. So what were your thoughts on the movie? I've always liked it. So I know back when it first came out and I had watched it, you know, of course it was scarier to me. Um, I really was scared of the Wishmaster guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know, try to remember if I could watch it all the way through or not. I can't remember, but I know it scared me. And then, you know, as I got older, you know, I've, I mean, I've probably seen it about 10, 11 times. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely doesn't have that same scare factor to me anymore, just because obviously I'm older. But I know when I was younger, I was like, holy shit, that guy is freaky. But I like it. It's one I do like to watch, um, you know, a couple times a year. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something I need to add to like my watch list of horror um franchises Mm -hmm. and what was i gonna say i need to watch the rest i need to watch the other three like that has to happen soon i don't know when because tomorrow night we're watching jaws (laughs) three oh cool (laughs) maybe maybe next week i don't know maybe sometime next week i think this week is gonna be like a shark week type of horror thing Mm -hmm. but um yeah definitely gotta watch the other three just to see how they are i hope they stand up I hope they're at least half as good as this one, I'll say. I won't say that they'll be as good because you know how it is with sequels. Sometimes they're yeah. amazing and sometimes they're just like, you should have just did one movie, man. I don't know what the fuck you were thinking. Mm-hmm. So hopefully they're entertaining. Hopefully they're entertaining at the very least and have some cool kills. I'll say that. Yeah. Well, I know I saw them. I just can't remember them. And I know that there was one of them that I did really like. I just don't know if it was the second, third, or fourth. Okay. But I did like it. Yeah, I can't say I can't like say that I was like, oh, those movies sucked. <laughs> they might be just as good though. You never know because these these type of movies, I do feel like they they kind of. I mean, some yes, obviously, are better than others. Like I'll say, like the Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween's, all those type of movies. Mm-hmm. As a whole franchise, they're all to me. They're all great franchises, no matter how you know. There's some bad ones in the middle or whatever, but. Yeah. As a whole, I think they're all great franchises. And you like, out of those movies, I'd say most people like at least three out of the freaking 47 they made of each. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Which is, to me, it's a good thing. I mean, mm-hmm. 
me for for example, like Friday the Thirteenth, I like every single one that ever came out. I do have ones that I like more than others. I'm sure you're the same with Nightmare on Elm Street. Probably have, yeah, like, a lot more than others, and I'm the same with Halloween. Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm the same. I just don't know the franchise that well. I have to rewatch it again. Mm-hmm. Like I know the main ones I know are the first three, one, two, and three. Those like those are my favorite three hands down. I don't know which one's my favorite. It's either one or three. Well, actually, it's either one, two, or three as far as my favorite goes. I really don't know. I have to like mm-hmm. figure that out. But um, the rest I have no idea. Like I yeah. I don't really know those ones too well. But again, those are like <laughs> the most popular ones. Those are the ones I feel like came on TV the most as as a kid. Those are the ones that you just every single time that my wife and I start. So it was like, we'll watch a horror franchise and we'll start with like the first one I've seen go through. We always mm-hmm. get, as far as Nightmare on the Street, it goes one, two, and three. And then just because other stuff comes up or whatever the case may be or too tired to watch it. And then it's just like, we never finished the whole thing. I'm like, just a couple, week or two ago, we did watch part four. So I got to watch the rest of those, I guess. And then mm-hmm. re- remake just to see how that is. Again, yeah. see it, but I've seen it maybe two times. And now I'm just like, I should probably go back and watch it because I didn't like it. So I should go mm-hmm. read it. The remake? Yeah. I got Yeah. It. I just watched it not too long ago again. It's not obviously my favorite because, you know, Robert Englund is my Freddy. So seeing somebody else do it, I didn't like it. But I mean, the movie I thought was okay. I mean, it's worth watching here and there. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't hate it. It's just not my favorite. Um, but Nightmare on Elm Street, one, three... And four are, I think, my top ones. Top ones. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, um, I'm not going to say they hate it, but a lot of people don't like part two of Nightmare on Elm Street. And I really enjoyed it. I like, like it. it. It's just not my favorite. I think for me, the big, excuse me, the biggest thing that I like about it is I know Freddy, he's kind of joking all of them, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But this is like the last one where he's like real, like, the first two is where he's the most serious, and after that, it kind of gets a little silly, which they are yeah. they're all fun. I think that's one thing I like about it a lot is that it's like the last one that's real serious. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I gotta I gotta watch that one again. I gotta watch that one again, and I gotta watch part three again to see which one's mm-hmm. my favorite of those two. Yeah, I love Freddy versus Jason though. A lot of people don't like that one, but I really really like that one. I enjoy. I see. I'm up and down with that one. Like, I do really, really enjoy it. As far as, like, my... I put... See, now that one I put in both franchises. So, as far as, like, my Friday the 13th franchise, I put it towards the end-ish. Mm-hmm. But as far as Nightmare on Elm Street, from what I know, it'll be, like, maybe more towards the middle. Which seems weird, but <laughs> that's just how mm-hmm. it goes. <laughs> that's another one I gotta rewatch. Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. I like that one. I love the beginning part of it when he's kind of telling the story. Yeah. As the kid's forgetting about him and he needs to bring back Jason to make him remember and bring him back. And I really, I liked that whole, that whole part. I did too. I, I, you know what it is? I, excuse me. I think my <laughs> issue with it was um, it wasn't dark enough for me. Like I thought for a movie that Jason's in, it should be a little bit darker. Mm-hmm. And that's, like I know Freddy's in it, so you have to have the comedy aspect of it. But I thought it was a little bit too much of that going on through the whole movie. Yeah, and if they cut that down like in half or more than in half, I think it would have did. I think it would have been better. It wasn't a bad movie though. And then I'm trying to think, yeah, like the um, the cornfield scene. It was cool. Mm-hmm. It was cool because all the kills. But I still wish it was like a lot darker and more sinister, more violent, more brutal. There were some cool kills in Don't get me wrong. But again, more serious. Just more serious. Those, at least Jason's moment should have been a lot more serious. Yeah. Freddy's moments I get, but Jason's moment should have been like 100% more serious. And then when they're together, you kind of have like a mixture of both. Mm-hmm. But again, it was, a fu- it was definitely a fun movie. Definitely entertaining. Definitely worth watching. And definitely not the movie we should be reviewing <laughs> i know right um but real quick since we're talking about franchises evil dead is one that i love every single one in the franchise i loved all three of the originals mm-hmm. um i loved ash versus evil dead all three seasons and i liked the remake as well i gotta see i gotta watch the seasons and i gotta watch evil dead part two i have yet to see part two <gasps> three, oh man two so i got bruce campbell right here 
Oh no, nope, that's the <laughs> that's the that's the other thing. I know that they're close now. That's good. <laughs> mm, I know he's right here. <laughs> but I, I um, as far as Evil Dead goes, I like the remake better than I like the original. Oh, just. I think just because it was so much gorier and bloodier, and, and it, it didn't look to it me, was. it didn't look bad. Mm-hmm. And I I did see that one in, in theaters as well, so that mm-hmm. also helped. Don't get me wrong, the original wasn't bad at all. The original was awesome, but it, I just liked that one slightly above the original. And I got to see part two. <laughs> I have to watch part. Two. Yeah, you got to watch part two because that one gets better. Because um, part one, you know, was their basically their student film, pretty much. They had just gotten out of uh, film school. And so then Evil Dead 2, you can see that they had more money, more special effects, um, all of that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely a huge difference. You know, it's funny. I own that movie on Blu-ray. And I got it. Oh. From, where the hell did I get it? Oh, I got it from... <laughs> oh, it scared me. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Because I pointed Shit. <laughs> I, I pointed it and she barked. I was like, what the hell did I just do? But I got it from this place called, um, it's a video store. Well, it's closed down now, unfortunately. It closed down a couple of weeks ago. It's called Crazy Nick's Videos. And I bought a, I went in there one day and bought a bunch of horror DVDs. And then I went in there maybe like a few weeks later with my wife and we bought a bunch more. And Evil Dead Part 2 was one of them. So oh, cool. I got I, I to gotta watch that. I got to make sure. I got to make sure it works too because I don't think it's sealed. And like all those DVDs and Blu-rays that I bought recently, I'm doing giveaways. For, which oh, cool! I keep thinking of different ways. Like I'm trying to get to 222 subscribers on my YouTube channel before I do my first giveaway. Mm-hmm. But I think what I'm gonna do when I do my giveaways is like a mystery box. Like I'll just have like say, whatever. Mo- mo- it'll mostly be movies to start out with, but eventually maybe other horror trinkets if I have doubles and triples of. Mm-hmm. But uh, like a mystery box. Like say I'll throw like three or four Blu-rays in there, or three or four D, DV- you know, three or four movies in there, maybe something random if I have it, and kind of just. Whoever wins the giveaway gets that random mystery box of horror stuff. And That'd be super cool. Just to help, you know, build my name up some more. So liking my like liking my page pages on Facebook, my two Facebook pages, the group and the page, and my YouTube channel and stuff like that. My podcast, mm-hmm. like following it on whatever streaming service. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kind of go from there. And it's just cool to kind of give away some cool stuff to people, especially if it's somebody who who's just. Like what I'm hoping, I, I'm not saying that this is how I'm going to choose winners. But what I'm hoping is, for the most part, the people that I give stuff to or the people that win stuff are ones that are kind of starting a collection or don't. Yeah. I'm getting ready to give them one or the other, if not both, just because it'd be cool. Like someone's like, I'm just starting out this collection. I'm happy I won this, and boom. And what I'm hoping too is, what I'm going to ask people to do, what I'm going to request is when they get it. Do like an unboxing video and just yep. video on the page. Do a quick unboxing. It doesn't have to be crazily done or nothing, you know, green screen and all that extra stuff. Just whatever you have, you know, do it on your phone, do an unboxing, post it on YouTube if you want and just post it on, the, you know, post it in the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that'd be great. But People yeah, love giveaways. They do. I, I love giveaways. I love giveaways. I actually had somebody before we get into this movie from Canada. Shout out to you, Steve, of the, uh, Horror Squad podcast. He seen that I was doing giveaways and getting ready to start up a giveaway. So he sent me so much cool things for a giveaway. Aww. He was like, "Do what you want with them. You need to keep some stuff or give, pick out what you want and give away." So there's a few things I did pick out for myself. I'm not gonna lie. That's <laughs> cool. Lie. I was like, "That's I thank that's a girl, man. Thank you so much. I I appreciate that." Yeah, that's so thoughtful. I love nice people. It really is. But it's just one of those things where, like, going back to how I always say uh, how nice the horror community is because I support their podcast and stuff like that. And I've had mm-hmm. it one time so far. I know I'll have mine again later on, you know, later on down the road. And just stuff like that, just like the little things that people do in the horror community for each other. Even if it's something as simple as supporting each other's podcasts, for, if you're a podcaster, sharing the podcast, sharing mm-hmm. podcast guests, and just all kinds of stuff. And it's crazy. It seems crazy because it's like, it's the most violent movies you can watch, but it's like the most, for the most part, not everybody, but for the most part, you got like the most friendly, loving people in this horror community, of course, with mm-hmm. everyone. It's going to be your assholes, it's going to be your dickheads, it's going to be the people you just like, fuck it, but yeah, you live and learn, you move on from that. You don't even hold it, hold on to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with that, <laughs> this movie right here, 
Who? Would, oh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I would not mind, and this might piss some people off, but I love horror movies. I love remakes. I wouldn't mind seeing a remake of this movie, but it has to be done right. Yeah. It's done right. It can't be too too much CGI. Like, I would love the practical effects. If they have to do a little CGI, I get it. But I would mm-hmm. love to see, I would really like to see this movie remade. It doesn't need it, but I would just love to see it. Yeah. It'd be cool to see, like, what they do with the gin um, mm-hmm. now that we have so much more you know, um, like, I guess in the special effects world, you know, they're, you know, not with CGI, but with practical effects, I think they could do a lot more with him now. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, he's still scary. Look at him. I mean, he's scary as shit, but I just wonder what they would do if they did remake it. I think that one right there, not, not this one, but the other hoodie pick is like one of the cool, that one right there is like one of the coolest picks. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And his face kind of changes through some of the, yeah. different scenes even his eyes his eyes are different too and there's that little ruby thing i was talking about yep i can get better with this point it's this this side here <laughs> i get mixed up with this this is this this boom boom i'll get it <laughs> yeah he's familiar though the guy that played um the Wish. Wishmaster. who is he oh uh, kind of reminds me of like ray liotta and i know it's not him but he reminds me of him andrew divoff He was in Air Force One, Another 48 Hours, Toy Soldiers. Obviously, he was in Wishmaster. So that's the only horror movie he was in? Uh, The Strain. I'm not sure. He was in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's like so, so familiar, but I can't place what else I saw him in. But I definitely, yeah, I gotta, I gotta watch the rest of this franchise because I just have a feeling it's gonna be enter- it's gonna be entertaining at the very least for me. Like this was, this was great. This was the first time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd be, I don't know if this would be cheating though because I've tried to watch it a couple times and I fell asleep. So I don't know if I can really count this as like a first time watch, first time full watch. Yes, but I don't care because I have that list with you know the best. 10 movies I've seen this year, no matter when they came out, just my first time watching the worst 10. This would probably, mm-hmm. this would possibly make my best 10, but oh. I don't think I can put it on that list just because I started it say sometime last year and fell asleep or two years ago, whenever it fell asleep. So I mm-hmm. technically already started it. So I guess I can't, which sucks, but it's all right. Yeah. But if you didn't watch it all the way through, it would still be a first time watch because you didn't get the whole experience of the movie. Honestly, as you, uh, you want me to tell you where I fell asleep at? I think every yeah. time. You know the beginning with the homeless guy where he's outside the store? And the dude's yelling. Yeah. Like, yeah piece around, of shit. That, around, that, around that time is when I'm always dozing off. <laughs> I have no oh, idea. Oh, that's like the beginning. Yeah. So maybe I could put it on the list. Mm-hmm. If I put it on the list, I'll put it on. Yeah, maybe I could add it to the list. Of, I wish I would remember what's on there, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to add it then. But this was good. So the one thing I didn't understand, though, is, okay, so everybody that wished, I mean, he would kill him within their first wish. So why did he not kill her with her first wish? Because she had two of them before she made that final third one. There was some, I forgot what it was, but there was something about her that he, I think he needed her to kind of survive for a little bit. I think he, I think she was the one that needed to make the three wishes for him to be unstoppable and be able to take over the world. Mm-hmm. I think it was her for some reason. I don't remember because I, I think they briefly explained it somewhat. Because remember, he gave her, he gave her the one free wish, mm-hmm. and then she got two more after that. And she didn't get a third. What was the third? Or no, the third wish was like the rewinding. That brought everything from to two. The end. Ago. Yeah, like, she remembered the guy's name that was drunk. She said, "I wish that so and so wasn't drunk two days ago." And, which was smart. Which, yeah. I was like, yep. That's, that's, that's genius, actually. Which yeah. brings us to the end part of it, of the movie, at least. And I enjoy, I liked the how it, I liked how it ended because it was, it was different. It was a different twist on it. And I was just like, okay, so everything is just rebounds where like nothing happened. And my only thought was, does she remember anything? Or is it just like where nobody, because, you know, 
everything got rewound, so obviously all those events didn't take place per se, but did she remember anything? And She did. Is she in the sequels? Uh, I can't remember if she's in the sequels, um, but I know like at the end she said something, I think, to the boyfriend that was like the best friend turned boyfriend. Okay. And she said something where it made it where you know she remembered. Okay. Yeah, you're probably right. I just can't remember like exactly the exact detail of it. Yeah, me either. Oh, that's cool though. But I mean, she remembered yeah. enough too to turn him into her boyfriend. Because remember in the beginning, she's like, "No, you know, we're best friends. I don't want to ruin that and this and that." And yeah. And when it rewound, she gave him that chance. It's, and he was confused by it because I remember. Yeah. He was like, "Are you okay?" Or whatever. And she kissed him. And then he got mm-hmm. happy. He was good after that. Oh well, yes, I remember that now. I yeah. Just what she said. But uh, overall, though, like I said, this was this is a good one. This is a fun one. Mm-hmm. And. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing well, it. And I do. I yeah. To, I keep repeating it, but I have to watch just to kind of see how the story unfolds for the next three movies. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to rewatch them because I, I, I just don't remember. I want to say the second one was the one that was pretty good, but I could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember. Um, well, it was cool too seeing, you know, so, you know, back when I had watched this. Mm hmm. You know, I was younger. I mean, this came out like so long ago. Um, Kane Hodder and Ted Rainey. I didn't know who they were really. You know, outside of Evil Dead and Friday the 13th, you know, I didn't know who they were. So it's cool. Or in in Candyman, Tony Todd. So -hmm. it's like now that I know who they are, it's you're like, oh my god, that's them. Yeah, that that's the awesome part of it. Like you point that out so quick, like because I mean, as far as Mm -hmm. as far as Candyman. And Freddie, Robert, that's easy to point out because you even in Nightmare on Elm Street, it had Robert England's features. Yeah. Well, they had the mask and the makeup and still had like his features. And Candyman, I mean, just a dude in a coat <laughs> with a hook head. Yeah. I know it was more True. to it than that, but it was, he wasn't under a mask or like under a bunch of makeup is what I'm saying. Like Kane Hodder, not only did he have the, uh, the latex mask on, but then he had a hockey mask on. So you don't know what he looks like yeah so, you know you've seen him in that and a couple other horror movies that he was in which was just cool mm-hmm. it was so cool seeing like horror icons because these guys are icons and their movies yeah. are iconic they're cult classics and it's like they were all in one freaking movie mm-hmm. who would have thought who knew who yeah i'm just like that's so cool that's so awesome well and then you think about okay so back then you know so robert england and kane hodder was in this then fast forward all these years later and they were both in Freddy versus Jason. Kane was supposed to be. They screwed him over. You didn't know that? He wasn't in that one? No, he was supposed to be. Like, I don't know. I know. No. He was, him and Rod Ringler, I know they were hyping it up a lot. You've seen them taking like pictures and all this stuff together about it. Yeah. But um, yeah, he says it in his book and in his, he says it in his book, which is a amazing book by the way if you haven't read it i highly recommend it i need to buy it i had i listened to it on audiobook but i need to buy it and his mm-hmm. documentary uh it's on uh it's called to hell his documentary is called to hell and back uh-huh and it's on it's actually on amazon prime i want to say it's on tubi and it's worth it's to me it's worth like a blu-ray buy but if you're i'll put it to you like this if you're somebody who is like emotional so to speak or like cries that mm-hmm. documentary is going to make you cry. And I'll say that because my wife was like, Aww. got all watery eyed, teary eyed, tearing up. And I got choked up a little bit. And I'm not like bad movies at all. But it was just like, because he goes through so much stuff. And then the type of person that he is, he's such a nice, human, gentle giant. And he go, he went through like so much stuff in his life. And just to be the person that he came out to be still, I'm just like, that's fucking awesome. But you should. I'll have to watch it. I highly, 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 highly recommend watching that. And I actually had um, the director on the podcast. I know the episodes are already out a few weeks ago. But, yeah, it's – you're going to love it. I'll put it to you like this. You're going to love okay. it. Okay. And Rob, okay. I believe Robert England's in it. I think he's in it. I know there's a few horror icons that are in it that know that are like friends with Kane Hodder cool. that say a couple cool things about him. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's – yes, get it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch oh, it. that's awesome. All right, I'll watch it. 
I get choked up on the Justin Bieber Never Say Never movie. <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> I watched it because my daughter, I brought her to the theater, and like then she went through this phase like last year where she was watching it over and over and over, and every time I'll freaking cry. I'm like, that's so amazing that he came so far. <laughs> well, like, now he's a piece of shit, but when he was little and sweet and innocent, it was like, oh. Yeah, wait till you see this. Wait till you see that Keen Otter documentary. You're like, wow. But it was it was amazing. Okay. But it, yeah, like you were saying though, it is it is cool. You see these icons in one movie, and then you go back and you see them like in smaller roles. Like Kane Hodder was in Pumpkinhead. He had a smaller role in Pumpkinhead. Oh, he was. Yeah, I forgot who he was in the movie, but he had a small role in there. He got killed. I don't know if it was the original or one of the sequels. And he had a huh. small role in one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. But yeah, actually. He actually played Leatherface in one of the movies, but as like a stunt double for certain scenes, not like throughout. Oh, okay. And then he was also a, another character. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah, so that's cool. But he played, I mean, and then, okay, so here, dude, real quick before we get back to Wish, Wish Master, he played Jason. <laughs> he played Leatherface technically because of the stunt scenes and all that. And then technically he played Freddy because Jason goes to hell where they're pulling the mask down into hell mm-hmm. with the glove that's Kane Hodder. That's, that's it, yeah. Which I thought was just awesome, and he was like, he was like, I, he was like, I played Jason, I played Michael, I played Freddy, or no, sorry, I played Jason, I played Freddy, I played Leatherface. He's like, I want to play Michael. That'd even be cool. Just, even if it's just like a stunt double, like a stunt scene. That would, yeah. To me, that would be amazing. Like, all right, he he did it. He yeah. Across the board, he did it. He hit all the icons. Yeah, he did. He did. That would be super still, cool. Still, that's, I just think that's awesome. And back to this though. I um, this is one of those movies like I was saying. I gotta add it to my like my watch list as far as like, you know, when I want to binge through like a franchise. This has to be added to my binge list of franchises, and I haven't mm-hmm. read the other four yet. But I feel like I like the first one. No matter how I feel about the next three, I'll probably I would still watch all three. You know, all four of them. Mm-hmm. And I wish I would have known about. The, I wish I would watch this movie a lot sooner. Like I wish I would watch this movie in my youth. I probably. Yeah better connection with it or enjoy love it i like it a lot i would probably love it mm-hmm. and i don't know it's it's just such a cool movie it really is such a cool movie and i feel like it's just for for my perspective i don't know about overall with horror fans but from my perspective i'll say it's underrated only because it wasn't a part of like the big names like the jasons the michaels the freddies and all that stuff but i feel like another reason is because when it came out and maybe if it came out even five, six years sooner, seven years sooner, it might have gotten a different type of feeling, maybe. But mm-hmm. again, 97, I was only, I was born in 85. I don't feel like doing the math. I was about 12, <laughs> <laughs> depending on when the movie came out. Mm-hmm. But again, though, back then, I was only used to watching like Jason, Michael, Freddy, say The Exorcist, whatever came on TV, like what was popular, what everybody knew. I wasn't into, not that I wasn't into horror like that, I just didn't know. Like I only had so much knowledge. And then, I couldn't go to the video store and grab a movie on my own. I had to have an adult, which was usually like my older brother or my older cousin or something at the time. Mm-hmm. It was all, it was always also what they watched so is what I watched. So it wasn't like, yeah, but now it's a whole lot different. Cause like the shit that I watched, they would probably never watch mm-hmm. I'm a lot of it. Like, hey, what the hell are you watching? Thanks killing again. <laughs> I had to mention thanks. Like, holy like, shit. So, so. <laughs> I love that movie. So I still I, need to watch it. Are you serious? Yes, I just I keep forgetting, but every time I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to watch that, and I forget to watch it. It's on um, Tubi now. Okay. So everybody out there who hasn't seen Thanksgiving, I'm talking to you guys as I'm looking right in the camera. Go watch it. It's on Tubi for free. <laughs> no excuses. Great movie. My favorite horror comedy. No excuses. None. <laughs> Zero. My favorite horror comedy is Cherokee Creek. Have you watched it yet? I didn't, but I do own it. I oh, I downloaded it on um, Prime like a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. It was That's great. Bucks, so I definitely got to check it out. I definitely got to check it out. Yeah. Cherokee Creek. Love it. And I've, I've see that's one movie I heard a bunch of good things about, and I even seen some guy. I guess he's on Instagram, or whatever, but. Was it Todd Jenkins? Ted Jenkins? Todd? Todd Jenkins? Yeah, he's the director. 
yeah, he posted it on Facebook, like shared it on Facebook. The guy's review of the movie it was hilarious, just like a hilarious review. It was only like a yeah long or whatever, but still, I was like, I gotta see this movie. I have to see. I own mm-hmm. it. I gotta watch it one of these days. Yeah, I had Todd and Billy on my show, and then um, the movie I just did, the COVID twenty twenty four. Billy has a part in there too. Sweet, I gotta check that one. Out. Mm-hmm. They're great guys. They're amazing, and they're really good actors. And it's just, it's hilarious. It's so fucking good. You'll love it. Good, 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 good. I heard good things about it, so I'll definitely I'll definitely check it out. And yeah, yeah. You know, I love horror comedy, so that'd be right up my mm-hmm. head. Yeah, you will not be disappointed. I promise. I hope not. I see. You know what it is too. It, it'll probably be a better movie overall than Thanks Killing, but Thanks Killing is a special place. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that movie. Yeah. But I love it so much. <laughs> like I'll probably feel like this. the my the joy I get out of watching Thanks Killing is like the same disdain I get out of watching a Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> that's a, I feel like that's how much oh. I enjoy that movie, which is weird because. <laughs> There's way better horror movies, of course. Way better horror mm-hmm. movies. But it's just one of those ones that just kind of... I don't know. It just draws me to them. I just got to watch it every now and then. Just to throw it on, laugh. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Try to get my wife to watch it, but she won't. <laughs> She's like, nope. Yeah, good. Yeah, she watched like... Yeah, that. I'll watch it. I think you'll enjoy Eventually. it. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Eventually, I'll watch it. I'll watch that <laughs> Creek movie when you watch Thanksgiving. All right. Creek. Creek. <laughs> that Creek movie. You just said the thing. <laughs> that Creek movie. I had Cherokee fight. Creek. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's good. <laughs> so, Wishmaster. Wishmaster, man. It was, it was, it was a fun movie. Um, we can jump into yeah. ratings if you want. Uh... Negative 10 okay. to a positive 10. Let's see uh, what you call it. Red rubies, the red thing he had in his hand. That gem. How many red gems? That red thing. <laughs> red <laughs> gemstones. <laughs> yeah, how many red gemstones? Uh, I would give it... I mean, I really, really do like the movie, and I've watched it so many times. Um, I would probably give it eight red gemstones. Nice. Just because it's, it's a movie I don't get tired of and i do like it and it just hasn't faded out over time with me watching it you know i mean sometimes i'll even throw it on just in the background when i'm falling asleep just i like it i think it's good Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and give it a 7.5 i really enjoyed it i feel like if i would have watched it damn near 20 years ago now i don't even know if i would have watched it a long time ago i think i would have had a better reception to it or just like enjoy mm-hmm. it or because i feel for one watching it younger you have that kind of scare factor as a kid and that sticks with you to an extent i'm not saying you're still scared but it kind of sticks with you. like yeah this movie scared the hell out yeah. of this movie now mm-hmm. but i really did enjoy it. like i said seven and a half it will make my top 10 list as of now it's going to make it which mm-hmm. i need to work on this thing some more because i forget what movies i watched that i've seen for the first time and forget one <laughs> it's it's a lot <laughs> but yeah. yeah this one definitely made this one definitely gonna make the list it might get bumped off right now it's making the list i don't remember where other movies are on the list if there's other movies on the list i gotta figure that out and i would definitely <laughs> i would definitely recommend this movie if you've never seen this movie i'd say just watch I, you know what if you've never seen this movie you've never seen this franchise just watch the whole franchise and i'm saying that well without even watching two through four i just watched part one yeah, I, I do highly recommend it. It gets the Sir Thirty stamp of approval, which eventually I will have like some sort of stamp thing that it just kind of stamps the screen. I just got to figure that That'd out. That'd be cool. I got to figure it out. One of these days I will. I, you know what it is? I haven't took the time to sit down and try to figure it out. I just keep saying I'm going to figure it out, but did nothing about that. I'm going about it all mm-hmm. wrong. <laughs> I just <laughs> add it on your list. I'll figure it out one day. <laughs> Alexa, make a list for me. What would you like to call me? Uh... Sir Sturdy, remember. That was Sir Sturdy, remember, right? Sir Sturdy, remember. Create a list called Sturdy, remember, right? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Create a Sturdy, remember list. What should I add to it? Stamp of approval. 
I've added stamp of approval to your sturdy remember list. What else? Thank you, Alexa. Bye. <laughs> oh my god. Alexa, turn off. She said I added Alexa bye to your list. Did I do what you wanted? No. Oh damn, I don't want to argue with this thing. Alexa, goodbye. Thank you. I've argued with this thing on this show a few times. I'm try I was trying not to do that because she doesn't listen always. Did I do what you wanted? <laughs> no. <laughs> what could I say? She said, do you want me to add anything else to the list? No. Alexa, bye. I added Alexa, bye. No, Alexa, turn off. <laughs> I have a Google, <laughs> too, which I'm going to set up one of these days, see which one works better, see which one listens to me better. <laughs> but, yes. That's, I need to start using this tool more often for me to remember things about this podcast, and I always forget to. It took me like two months to bring it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> What about my friend, my friend James, right? Because he has one. He's like, yo, why don't you just hook up your, I don't want to say the name again, and, you know, just make a list. He's like, that's what I do. I was like, yo, that's a good idea. I was like, yo, after we're done recording today, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to get it. I'm going to bring it up. Nope. <laughs> it was like this whole day of pandemic. I was mm -hmm. saying, I finally brought it up again. <laughs> You're like, next time. Yep, next time. But, yeah. So <laughs> I got to do the search 30 sample of approval. I should also put on this machine thing, my list, just say my list, my top 10 and bottom 10 countdown list. So I can just remember. Yeah. And then you can always check them off. Like if you decide, Oh, actually I don't want that one on there anymore. You can take it off. See, that's smart. Mm -hmm. but, so uh, at least you have them. You can remember Then you can go through that list and be like, okay, here's my one through 10. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to do. We'll see if it happens. Yeah. And this, this list thing won't be part of my podcast, which listeners are going to hear this too. I don't care. It's going to be like one of my videos I just put. Well, it's going to be two different videos because top 10, bottom 10 that I put out. And I'll probably have a background similar to this. I don't know how I'm going to have it, though, because I want it to be a surprise when I'm discussing the movies, too. Like, I mm -hmm. like the movie, blah, blah, blah. I didn't like this movie. So I have to figure out, like, I'll figure something out. Yeah. I don't know what yet. <laughs> Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this was fun, as usual. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love it. Another day, another podcast. Yeah. Oh, anything you want to plug, feel free to go right ahead and do your plugs, do your shout outs. Okay. Um, so check out my show, Sinister Parlor Podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Um, I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. There's my little logo. <laughs> um, my books, Broken Halo and Broken Halo Blood Curse available on Amazon in print and Kindle. Um, my third one will be out actually in March of next year. So I'll plug that later once it's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, check out our new movie COVID 2024 on YouTube. It was directed by Lauren Lepre um, with average superstar films. Also check out the dark web mystery box, which is available on YouTube as well, but also DVDs um, directed by, by Josh Schultz and uh, Tony Newton from Vestra Pictures and Mort House Films. Um, I was also just added to the cast of Axe to Grind, which is a horror movie directed by Spencer Gray. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and I think that's about it with me so far. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that's awesome. Congra congratulations on the movies that you've done and the movie that you just got cast for, which is awesome as hell. Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> Secondly, I want to say everybody, everything she just mentioned, go follow her. I will have the links below. So yes, click the links below and the YouTube video, her YouTube channel will be at the end of this video. So click that, give her a subscription, follow her on all her platforms that you're on. Awesome podcast. Awesome podcaster. Thank you. <laughs> um, and as far as for me, I'm Horror Star Sturdy Group on Facebook. Join the group. Share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects. That includes you. And funny memes, all that stuff. Just okay. be involved in the horror conversation, but you can share your own projects. I'm cool with that. I have a Horror Star Sturdy page. That's strictly for the podcast. Like when I drop my podcast videos. And all that, they're going to go strictly to the page instead of the group, just so the, the page needs more love. <laughs> so all my news, as far as like whenever I'm going to a con, whenever that happens again, it'll be on the page. Oh, I know. And just anything search 30 related. 
that's horror related will be on that page as well. I have a YouTube channel, Horror Research 30, where you can see all these awesome videos and a bunch of randomness. Mm-hmm. I have a Twitch channel, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore 30. And as far as what the podcast goes to listen to, you can hear me again. You can see it on YouTube. You can hear it on Podbean, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and anywhere, anywhere else you can listen to podcasts. You should be able to hear me. Title, I'm not sure. Talk to Jay-Z. Tell him to get me on there. We can work something out. <laughs> I don't know if I'm on there or not. But, you know, <laughs> anywhere you can hear podcasts. And if you ever want to be a guest, ask anybody. Just shoot me an email, horrorwithsert.30. And it's horrorwithsert.30 at gmail.com. And come on and do a movie review. Or if you're in horror movies, let's talk about your projects. Thank you oh, again yeah. for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's always fun. And thank you for having me on multiple, multiple times. I love it. <laughs> I love the record. This is, this is You're one of my biggest supporters and I appreciate it. <laughs> Gotta show love. The horror community has to keep growing. The only way we're all going to grow is if we all help each other out. And if it's just simply listening to somebody's mm-hmm. podcast, hitting like, hitting share, which hitting like and hitting share helps us a lot when you like our videos on YouTube and you subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us as far as getting our not just getting our views up more, but it kind of moves our videos up more. So where it's like, you know, you have those random videos just kind of popping up when you're watching YouTube. It helps us mm-hmm. get our videos up there like that. So please keep doing that. People like the videos, share the videos, subscribe to our channels, hit that notification button. It takes you two seconds. Two mm-hmm. seconds out of your life. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's about it. Let's keep supporting each other in horror. And as always, I'll see you.